colors. They're pretty cool, so let's do cool things with them. Before we get started, let's recap. I'll go to handles colors in two formats, RGB and HSV, red, green, and blue, and hue saturation value. Then we just add an A at the end of both for alpha, also known as opacity. I'll go to stores color as lists of four values, as shown here. All values have a standard range of 0 to 1, except hue, which has a range of 0 to 360. Additionally, I'll go to provide some helpful functions to convert between the two formats, as shown here. I'll go to actually also has two more functions, where instead of HSV, it uses HSL. HSL is an alternate format to HSV, but I'll go to doesn't use it, so the functions aren't that useful. Now that's all covered, time for some cool techniques. First up, mass color change, or multiplicative color. This technique involves a hidden feature of Algodoo's object layering system to change the color of many objects all at once. Just in case you're unaware, Algodoo has a layering system accessed by right-clicking the background. It's pretty useful. In order to perform the trick, the code is rather simple. Just run this function. ID here means the number as seen in the layer menu, so layer 3 has an ID of 3. If the layer ID already exists, it simply replaces the old layer's properties with the new properties. The effect is that the apparent color of every object on the layer will be its own RGB color multiplied by the layer's color. Here's an example. On the left we have normal colors, and on the right those colors have been multiplied by orange. As you can see, reds generally stick around, while blues disappear entirely. Additionally, you can run the code continuously to produce a fading effect between two colors. Here's an example where I fade all the colors to a dark red. One final note, layer colors can actually go above one, allowing for things to get brighter if needed. Here's an example. On the left we have a bunch of dark colors, but on the right we have those same colors multiplied by two in both the blue and green channels, which makes the blues and greens bright, but keeps the reds dark. And that's it for the first technique. On to the second. Technique 2. Additive Color Blending. Additive color blending is simply the process where you add two colors together to get a new color. If the added color exceeds the max, in this case 1 or 100%, then the color that is displayed just is the max. Of course, we can't normally do this in Algodoo, so we have to exploit how regular transparency is handled by exceeding normal ranges. So here's how the trick works. First, you set the color you want to add to all colors below, multiply value by 1000, and then divide alpha also by 1000. And then you're done. You've created additive color. And there's more. If you multiply and divide value in alpha by a much smaller number, such as 4, you can get a partial additive blend. Here's an example. On the left, we have additive, and on the right, we have normal 50% alpha. But in the middle, we have a partial additive where I multiplied and divided alpha by 4 instead of 1000. With some effort and experimentation, you can create some neat things with partial additive blending, such as these lights I've been able to create. And now, one last thing. You can combine the technique shown to create a layer where everything on it automatically additively blends with layers below. And here's the function. Oh, and some important info about textures. They generally work fine, you just can't brighten them beyond the normal amount with multiplicative blending only additive blending can make textures appear brighter. And that should be everything. In the description, I'll post down the links to example scenes for you to look at, on your own time. Thanks for watching.